My name is Ron Tirada, and I'm an artist based in Vancouver. I've been a text-based artist since for about 30 years, and I was interested in text because it's the most direct form of communication. Instead of being a kind of expressionistic painter, let's say, I'm more interested in like directness. So in some ways, I'm kind of like a failed graphic designer pretending to be an artist, maybe. But really, it's, it's still paint on canvas. I just use a, a, a stencil to make the paintings. This particular project uses the, the medium of painting to carry the message, so to speak. It's a series of work called TLDR that I started in 2017. And it just basically takes tech headlines and I, I transform them into individual paintings. In this case, the work that's in this room tries to represent the year 2020. So the headlines that I called from The Verge and how they try to transmit the news of 2020. By the, by the time I finished the 2019 headlines, I was going to stop this particular body of work. But then of course 2020 happened. So I thought it was in my interest to see how the year was going to play out. And so once I decided that I should do 2020, then I really went for it in a very big way because previous iterations of the work did not exceed like 50 paintings. It ended up being a very tumultuous year, not just because of COVID, but because a lot of things came to a head like Black Lives Matter. And then certainly this attempt at being reelected by, by Trump, right? So all of this thing was sort of like coming to a boiling point. And I think 2020 was like our year of the plague, let's say, you know, or our generation's version of the plague. So I wanted to just kind of cap this moment in a very sort of um, thorough way. Although, of course, there are still m many, many gaps in the work, but I, I, f I still think 325 paintings still conveys a sense of this year that, you know, we all lost. I think with our, you know, increasing reliance on our smartphones, tablets, what have you, like we're constantly plugged in or, and the screen is never off. So painting has this capacity to do something else, right? Like it freezes time or suspends it and it allows for contemplation, which I don't think the screen does. We're probably more prone to forgetting because we're constantly bombarded with information, right? So I wanted painting to sort of, it's, it's kind of a contradiction in a way. So to freeze that for a moment and to also to, to give this, our interaction with the screens a physical presence, because again, it's, it almost feels virtual or augmented or well, detached. It was more an attempt to just find some commonality. I didn't want to do something that's like exclusive to the art world. I wanted something that lived outside of it. When you read the paintings, one should also be familiar with the typeface and it's derived from the New York Times. There are clues embedded in the work such that I think any viewer can have an access or entryway into the work. You know, despite that it's all language based, I think it's very accessible. I finally get to see this project, like, because it only exists in my mind. Even though I made each painting, I can't assemble it like this because it's impossible physically. Like, I just didn't have the space. So, so in that sense, I, I have a huge sense of gratification and, you know, a bit of relief too. There aren't too many spaces large enough to actually exhibit the scale of this work like comfortably in the country. So it was a fantastic opportunity for me. It's the only way that I can finally see this project that I've been working on, like what it actually looks like and what it's like to physically experience it.